This is the Porsche Cayman GT4 and it's a little bit like me. You see, it's, it's red and black. By the way, this is a total accident. I didn't plan to match my clothes to the car because that's an absolutely moronic thing to do. Only an idiot would wear this stuff if you didn't have the car. Do you know what the colour scheme actually reminds me of? Reminds me of this. Look, fire extinguisher. But this car is smoking. OK, so we bought a fire extinguisher. It should be deploying its fire retarding carbon dioxide, but it looks like we've sold an empty one. Brilliant. This car is brilliant though, and I'm going to tell you why in this video. So I'm going to show you the upgrades over the standard Cayman. I'm going to take it for a drive. I'm going to launch it to see how quick it is to 60 miles an hour, and of course, brake test it as well. Now, if you enjoyed, let's start this review by talking about the design upgrades over a normal Cayman. So the GT4 gets this huge fixed rear wing, which provides actual real downforce. You also get a rear diffuser. Once again, helps with the aerodynamics. It has a function. You get twin exhaust pipes, which are split. So they're different than on the normal Cayman. There's the obvious GT4 badge and a deeper rear bumper as well and oh smoked tail lights moving down the side you get slightly different design for the air intake to the mid-mounted engine it's got gt4 written on it as well and unique alloy wheels 20 inches in diameter and you can either have them in silver or pay extra to have them in either this black or a gold color moving to the front look it's a real air vent air goes in there smooth it down the side like that in fact the arrow on this does actually work this front splitter helps reduce lift, I like the way it's got GT4 written on it as well. And you've got a much more aggressive front bumper than the standard Cayman, and of course the vent that you get in all GT cars here. Makes it look like the car is smiling. One of the key features of the Cayman GT4 is its upgraded engine, and it's just under here. I can prove it to you because there's where you put the water in for the radiator, and this is where you put the oil in. The engine itself is a four litre, flat six with 420 horsepower and 420 newton meters of torque. Drives the rear wheels via a seven speed dual clutch automatic gearbox or a six speed manual. Best thing about it though is that it's naturally aspirated rather than turbocharged like most other Caymans. Let's hear what it sounds like. And I'm in the perfect position because I can get the intake noise here and the exhaust just here. So let's start it up. We're going to do that again because the guy <laughs> is supposed to be starting it. Couldn't figure out how to do it. Then he started swearing. So let's, let's, let's go again. Blah, 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 engines. Oh. I can feel the vibrations in my bottom as well, which is um, doubly pleasing. This PDK version of the GT4 is supposed to do 0 to 60 in 3.9 seconds, but I bet it's quicker than that. It's dead easy to launch because it's a Porsche, just lift one on the brake for the throttle. All the revs. Traction issue, cold tyres, what have we got? 4.34. Oh, that's because I struggled for grip. So there I am going, oh, well, I bet it goes quicker than that. I instantly proved myself completely wrong. I'm going to give it another go. I know it's quicker. All right, let's try it again. Hook up. No, didn't hook up. What have we got? 4.30. I just can't put the power down. Right, let's try again. Come on, Porsche. That was a bit better. 4.04. I know what I'm going to do. Stability and traction off. Okay, this is the last go at this. Last go. Come on. Oh, no, I'm just sliding. Did that help? No, it was worse. <laughs> oh, bollocks. Do you know what it is? This car is fitted with Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tyres. They are brilliant track tyres, but they need heat to them, otherwise they don't have much grip. And that's what's happening. When I'm launching it, it's spinning up the wheels, and if I've got the stability and traction on, then it just kills the power a bit. If I don't, then it spins like that, and I don't really get much forward propulsion. That's a problem. Final go. I hooked up better. No. Right, I give up. The GT4 has upgraded brakes over the standard Cayman, but this car has the optional carbon ceramics and they're better still. So you have 410 millimeter discs up front, gripped 
by six piston calipers and the back you've got 390 millimeter discs gripped by four piston calipers so we see just how good they are right let's do a brake test from 60 miles an hour there we go full emergency stop what's it gonna do right what did we do the car stopped in 32 meters that's actually really good. So the GT4 has a bunch of chassis upgrades over the standard Cayman. For instance, as standard, you get Porsche Active Suspension Management, so adaptive dampers, and the car is lowered by 30 millimeters. In fact, the whole setup of the suspension is a lot more focused than on the standard car. The components used in the front and rear axles are lighter, for improved responses. Also, it uses the inverted dampers and control arms from the 991 generation of 911 GT3. That's not all though. You've got wider wheels and they're actually shod. I hate that word shod. Well, I don't know why I use the word shod, but anyway, <laughs> they're fitted with Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tyres, so track-focused tyres. You've also got active gearbox mounts for more rapid gear changes, plus you get a limited slip differential on the rear axle with torque vectoring, so the engine can send power to the wheel with the most grip. As well as being able to adjust the toe and the camber of the wheels, you can adjust the anti-roll bars as well. Now let's take it for a drive after all that. Right, let's see how this GT4 feels to drive. <laughs> That's the first thing to notice is the engine sound. It's all about the induction. So I don't know what it sounded like on the outside. I've got the exhaust on loud, but I'm just experiencing full induction noise and oh <laughs> it just sounds so lovely that flat six naturally aspirated engine just behind your ears oh it's a delight and it revs for days red line 8000 rpm though the interesting thing is it doesn't seem to keep on building the power it just seems constant it's not like a mad rush to the red line it's nice to have all those revs but it doesn't keep on pulling harder at the top end like the GT3 does. Lots of power building, building, building. It's starting to feel a bit flat there, but I'm splitting airs, it's still bloody lovely. I'll tell you what's also lovely, the steering. Oh my gosh, you can place this car so easily, exactly where you want it. And the feel that you get through the rim is really nice and it helps it's Alcantara, so it's nice and tactile. This thing is an absolute joy to drive and it really does tell you what it's doing as well. You can tell if it's starting to understeer or oversteer and it's got a short wheelbase so it does move around quite a bit. If you're kind of sudden on the brakes or you're like lifting off, it's full of feedback. It's great. It is quite a confidence inspiring car. It just feels so solid, so like nailed down to the road. The thing is, if you have one of these, you're just gonna be wanting to look for roads like this day in, day out, because this is where it truly comes alive. Get on track and it's even better. It's a, it's a brilliant track car. I had this on track for a whole day, got through a set of tires on it. Anyone who buys a GT4 and doesn't take it on track days regularly is just, well, they should have the car taken off them. Now, I actually drove both the manual and the PDK on track. I actually prefer driving the manual. There's more for me to do, though I was probably about, I don't know, a second slower per lap at least. This PDK allows you to be a lot quicker. It really does. It's not only the timing of the shifts, which are instant, compared to however long it takes you to manually shift gears. It's also just you're not thinking about the gears so much and, and managing all of that when you're driving on track, putting in times. However, I'm not a racing driver. I'm not trying to put in the best times. I'm there to have fun. I want a car like this to have fun in. And the manual is just more engaging. And I think on the road as well, it's going to be even more so where you can't fully exploit this car's chassis, its grip levels, and its performance. So when you're changing gears yourself, you're heel and towing, you're just more involved with those other parts of the car as well. And the manual gearbox on the Cayman GT4 is so mechanically snickety and lovely. It's a joy to change. Now having said that, it's a joy to change the PDK as well because it's, look, I mean, it's just, look, look at that. Oh, blink your eyes and it changes like that. It's such a very good dual clutch automatic gearbox and when you compare it to other manufacturers gearboxes their autos this is at the top of its game let's put it into just normal drive i'm just cruising around in my cayman gt4 because i'm an idiot and i spent almost a hundred thousand pounds on a track focused sports car and i just want to drive it like it's a normal everyday shopping hatchback oh yes and then why, why have i bought this car actually that's a point one thing about this car, it's got quite long gearing. So I'm in second now. Let me put it into manual second. Let's lock it in. How fast can I go in second? 
I can break the speed limit in second gear on a 60 mile an hour road. Look, I'm holding it just under 60. And I've got a load more revs to play with. That's how long the gearing is. And this is a seven speed auto as well. If you're in the six speed manual, I don't know, what will it do? About 100 miles an hour probably in second, which is just unnecessary. Probably for fuel efficiency and emissions and all that kind of malarkey. So this car is fitted with the Porsche carbon ceramic brakes. I appreciated them on track. Once you get them up to temperature, really good stopping performance. will go all day without any fade. They really will. On the road though, I do find them a bit grabby at times. It's a little bit harder to judge how much braking force you're applying compared to steel brakes. I prefer steel brakes personally. I mean, they're not awful. Did you hear that? But they're kind of making lots of grunching and screeching noises as well. So the steel brakes are better for everyday driving. And as for everyday driving this Cayman, well, do you know what? When you've got the adaptive suspension in like the softer setting, it's actually really good over bumps. It's because it's so sophisticated. It just deals well with uneven road surfaces. And that's good when you're going quite quickly because you don't feel like you're going to be ricocheted like, into the air and then lose grip and end up in a hedge. If you want a more hardcore experience and you've got more money, click on the pop-out banner up there to watch my in-depth review of the 911 GT3, this car's bigger brother. Now I want to talk about the interior of the GT4 because a lot of manufacturers, when you get their top sporting model, there's quite a lot of upgrades on the interior. But with this car, really all you get extra as standard is GT4 written there and uh, GT4 on the sill. I mean, you do get two-way electrical adjustable sports seats. Other than that, though, it's just like a normal Cayman. So, yeah, driving position is really good. Quality is pretty good as well. I like the fact you've got a big analog rev counter in the centre, though. To be fair, the little digital display you get on the right, a little bit low def. This infotainment system is feeling old-fashioned now, and it's a little bit fiddly to use, so that's not great. And that brings us on to five annoying things about the Cayman GT4. This rear wing may look cool if you're on the outside, but when you're inside the car driving it, looking in the rear view mirror, it kind of affects your rearward visibility. These carbon fiber bucket seats look cool, but they're rather expensive. They're like over 4,000 pounds, and the backrest is just a little bit too upright. Now you can actually do some bots there and tilt the whole seat unit back somewhat, but it doesn't help you if you're wearing a helmet because the uprightness of the backrest means that you still end up like a bit hunched because that headrest always pushes your helmet forward. Who were mister? <laughs> You might think that this being the most track focused version of the Cayman, it will probably be the lightest, but no. It weighs in at 1420 kilos, whereas the GTS version, which has the same engine, weighs in about 15 kilos lighter. So what's all that about, NA? Now that weight issue makes these fabric door pulls even more ridiculous. I mean, I suppose they're there to help save weight, but really, what is the point? They're really awkward to use as well. Considering the price, you don't get that much standard equipment. For instance, dual zone climate control, that's an optional extra. You want Sport Chrono, which you think should just come with a GT car. No, that's an optional extra. The Alcantara steering wheel, optional extra. If you want this little stripe on here, it's in yellow, that's another separate optional extra. Costs 170 pounds, it's nuts. This car's got the optional extra laser lights, the roll cage here and the fire extinguisher. I hope that one works. Should do at 105 pounds. All these lovely colors in here and the red stitching, optional extra. Cruise control is an optional extra. And it's not even good cruise control, it's just basic. There's no like lane keeping assist or anything like that. There's so many options on this car, but the price is 97,000 pounds for this very car you see here, which is just stupid. It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. The underside of this front splitter has dimples in it. A bit like a golf ball to improve the airflow. Actually, all the air on this car means it's got 50% more downforce than the previous generation GT4. The GT4 has a special two-stage driver assistance system. So you can actually turn off the ESC, but leave the traction control on so that you don't spin up your wheels. Or you can just press that button to turn them both off together. And so basically everything's off and you can just hoon as much as you want. The previous generation GT4 had a limited production run. This one doesn't though, which means it's going to be easier to buy one if you want one. Though, will that mean that it won't hold its value as well? Because it won't be quite so rare. Hmm. Porsche says this car will average 26 miles per gallon, which is... Oh, excuse me. Which is pretty impressive for something that will do 188 miles an hour. In fact, on the motorway, on a cruise, I actually averaged over 30 miles per gallon, which is insane. The active exhaust means that you can press a button in the cabin to make it slightly less noisy, so you don't annoy your neighbors so much. 
Or of course, you can just think, them. Wake them up in the morning. Come on, you lazy buggers, get up. This is my Porsche. So then, what's my final verdict on the Porsche Cayman GT4? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I think you should go right ahead and buy the Cayman GT4, but not in this spec because it's just a little bit too expensive. Get a manual version with just a few choice options and that will be the sweet spot. It's an awesome thing.